Josh, we might have made a hole. <laughs> we might have. I don't know yet. I can't tell for sure. But we may have found just the ticket to put a hole through our half-inch plates. I've played around a lot with 308 armor-piercing ammo. I've loaded up M2 bullets into 308. I've done the M80A1. And I've even played around with M855A1 against our steel targets. But what I've never done is load up M2 black tip armor piercing or the silver tip API 30 caliber ammo into 300 Winchester Magnum. I finally worked up a load. We're gonna test it today. We're gonna put it on paper first, run it through my chronograph so I can figure out the velocity. And then ultimately at the end of this video, we're gonna stack these rounds against some hard steel AR550 plates to find out the capabilities of 300 Winchester Magnum armor-piercing ammo. Got both magazines loaded up. We're gonna start off with the silver-tipped bullets. These are an armor-piercing incendiary. Back in the day, they were called plate test rounds these were designed to basically test armor plates as far as i know they were actually never put into like duty service soldiers didn't carry these they're mostly used for testing if you know anything else and i'm wrong correct me in the comments let me know shoot some links love to learn more about it we're going to put all of these rounds through the chronograph which is only 10 feet in front of me i'm going to read the velocity after each round and then after i put these on paper we're going to go down range and look at the impact so that i know and basically what I'm doing here is I want to know on paper, where do I have to aim at 100 to hit steel? You do not have load data for stuff like this. So these are proprietary loads and these are loaded hot. The objective for both the black tip and silver tip are to get over 3000 feet per second because I want to stack the odds against the target plates that we're going to have downrange at the end of this video. So make sure you watch all of this. There's lots of good information to be learned. Let's send it. Oh, and we've got We've got armored nutria downrange, and these nutria are a nuisance. If you want to deal with armored nutria, you got to come with the right round and the right rifle. Let's get into it. Okay, that was 2,945 feet per second. No signs of overpressuring, so we're going to hit send again. Two thousand nine hundred and forty-eight. Send one more. Two thousand nine hundred and forty-four. Man, that is wicked. That is so consistent. No signs of overpressuring, so we're good. All right, that's it for the silver tip. We are now going to move into the black tip round. The black tip is a little bit heavier bullet. These silver tips are around like 150 some grain. Aiming at the top target. Ooh, I pulled that one. Getting a little jumpy here. So that's 2,915 feet per second on that one. A little slower. We'll slow down here. All righty. 2,944 feet per second. So that's quite a change there. Two thousand nine hundred and sixteen. So let's go down range and check that out. I can already tell from the scope, the black tip are hitting lower and they're not very consistent. I don't know if that's me or just the load. Let's go check it out. So the thing I'm looking at when I'm looking at this brass is whether or not the primer looks like it's super flattened out or there's any kind of fracturing case issues. Now, I don't see any of that with my loads, which is important when you're hand loading ammunition, it's critical that you are analyzing all of the basically telltale signs that the case is telling you because it's super tempting for hand loaders to just go to the hottest load possible without analyzing the data. And also speed is not always your friend. Sometimes going too fast can actually blow your groups out of proportion. But looking at the data over here on our armored up Nutria targets, down here are the API. And as you can see, we had the first round impact was low. 
the last two shots are almost touching. Beautiful group. Up here on the black tip, my first round hit way low. I flinched on that. I'm not gonna lie, guys, I was a little scared to shoot the uh, black tip armor piercing. It's a really long, heavy bullet. There's no specs for any of this stuff. You can't find load data on any of this kind of stuff. You have to find comparable bullets that are about the same length, but finding those that are the same weight is nearly impossible. So I was kind of guessing, and on a previous range, I worked up some initial loads. Now we're working up in the velocity. I did not break 3,000 feet per second with either load. With the signs on the cases, I probably could go to a hotter load. I could maintain accuracy, obviously, but I think I'm gonna let it go. We're gonna finish out this video. But this tells me that at 100, we're hitting a little bit left on both of these from center, but I can probably land the rounds directly on the steel target without compensating too much. So I think without further ado, we should go back to the bench. We should load up the silver tip API and put some rounds on a season steel target. So now that we got the C-Zone downrange at 110 yards, I've got the silver tip API plate test 30 caliber ammunition. This stuff is loaded up hot. I've got the chronograph right in front of me. We're gonna be putting rounds, two rounds on the C-Zone. I'll read off the velocity between each round and then we're gonna go down range and check out what damage, if any, the silver tip a API ammunition does on our C-Zone. It was 3,008 feet per second. We got it over 3,000. Nice, 2,974. Let's go down range and see what happened to that season. Oh man, dude, look at all of that. It did dig out the plate, but it didn't even come close to going through. But look at all that black soot. Dude, that is wild. <laughs> oh man. So that is the silver tip ammunition. Again, armor piercing incendiary. As you can see from the plate, there's that big old splash of soot from the incendiary component of this round. I've always known API to be less damaging to steel target plates. What about the black tip M2? Loaded into 300 Winchester Magnum. This is the one that I'm terrified of. This is the one, if any of them are gonna go through, I think it would be this one. So let's go back to 110 yards and let science do the talking. Silver tip API made quite the splash. We're gonna send two rounds of the black tip armor piercing. These are the M2 30 caliber bullets. It's a World War II era armor piercing round. Two rounds onto that C zone. We'll go down range and check it out then. That was 2,951 feet per second on the chronograph. Two thousand nine hundred and fifty-three. Josh, we might have made a hole. We might have. I don't know yet. I can't tell for sure, but we may have found just the ticket to put a hole through our half-inch plates. Let's go down range and check it out. So before I go down range, I want to talk a little bit about this warranty claim plate. This was returned to us over at TA Targets because it's got a giant hole in it. Now the customer was shooting one hundred and sixty-five grain Federal Fusion from a three hundred Win Mag and he thought that's what made this hole. We replaced the plate under warranty, even though I knew that there was something way bigger, way nastier that caused that hole. Long story short, guys, we've been doing a whole series of content on this target plate over at TA Targets. Go check it out. Check out the TA Targets YouTube and check out our products, tatargets.com, because we make what I believe to be the strongest steel targets on the planet. And we are on the hunt to try to figure out what created that hole. But 
Let's go down range and figure out if the M2 armor piercing was enough. And as I said, the black tip armor piercing, it's a World War II era armor piercing projectile. It's got a black painted tip on it. These were originally loaded in 30 odd six. Now, 300 Win Mag is going substantially faster than 30 odd six. And as we saw from the chronograph, we were going about 2,950-ish feet per second. So let's check that out. No freaking way, dude. It didn't do anything. What the heck? Dude, I saw that down there. I saw that copper. I thought for sure that was a hole in my scope. But no, it's just the copper getting splatted on there. Dude, the fact that... <laughs> Hold on a second. This is ridiculous. The fact that M2 armor piercing from a 300 Winchester Magnum did not cause a hole is absolutely insane. If that is not a testament to two things. One, the strength of the AR-550 we use, which again, nobody else is using that I'm aware of. It is really hard to get the plate that we source and we get it direct from the mill in massive quantities. Nobody else is playing that game. Number two, the engineering of our ADAP top bracket is crucial to defeating ammunition like that. But just look at that. Dude, it didn't even get halfway through that plate. I hope you guys can see that on camera. That is just a tiny, tiny little chip. Hang on, I'm grabbing the warranty plate again. I'll be right back. <laughs> Dude, what the heck? I thought for sure there was a hole. When I was shooting this target, I had the pin down at the lowest, well, second lowest hole. What that does is incur even more forward lean. Obviously more forward lean angle, the more aggressive and steep the target, the less prone to damage it would be. But just for now, I put it at one of the top holes, which is almost straight up and down, just so we can compare these chips to the warranty claim plate. So again, you can see these are just small chips. Really, they're no different than the 308. If anything, honestly, the 308 M2 rounds went deeper. So there's an M2, there's an M2, I guess not. Maybe this one a little bit. And maybe that's just the velocity broke up that hardened, hardened steel core. But when I hold up that plate, and you guys look at that hole, that's about a 0.4 inch diameter hole. And everybody online said, nah, there's no way. That was just 300 Win Mag. It, you know, 300 Win Mag will punch through any target. They're saying things like, oh, it was probably M2 armor piercing out of 300 Winchester Magnum. We just proved that wrong here on this C zone. But just to make sure we don't have a dud of a plate here on the warranty claim plate, we will be doing content on that in the very near future. So what's the point of this video? Well, the point of this video was I was curious. And at the end of the day, that's what most of this channel is about. I want to learn things. I want to test things. I want to figure stuff out. And I bought these M2 black tip and silver tip bullets back at the Knob Creek machine gun shoot way, way, way back in the, in the distant past. They've been laying around. I didn't have a good use for them. And I just wanted to see what could they do? What could they possibly punch through? So if you're interested in more content with these, you wanna see some other destructive testing, I can absolutely do that. We can get the team out here and do all kinds of other cool stuff. But hopefully that just shows you two things, capability of this nasty ammunition, but also the limitations of it. And you just never know when you need to protect yourself from something like this. And by golly, it looks like I found the plate that'll do just that. Now, obviously guys, as with all things, don't do this kind of stuff at home. It's super dangerous. This is a controlled environment. We're super safe. We know there's nobody around anywhere, so we can do this kind of stuff. Always use proper ammunition on the steel targets. But if you have any questions or you wanna see other content like this, please let me know down in the comments. If you think our steel targets are still snake oil over at TA Targets, just vent it out down below. As always guys, stay well, stay safe. I will see you in the next one.